Hi folks, Jake Von Slott here, and uh, time to start winding the transformer. Uh, in the earlier videos you saw me uh, disassemble these uh, saturable reactors uh, to, to get the uh, components uh, that I needed. Um, so I've done that, and I made a, a bobbin. Uh, this is made with uh, G10 cut up and taped together with some Teflon tape. Uh, it's a, uh, it's like a woven fiberglass and Teflon tape. Um, I'm going to be winding the primary with the leftover 14 gauge wire from the disassembled saturable reactors. And uh, I built this um, this winding rig to to, to wind it. Originally I was going to power it with an electric drill, but it actually turns out to be much easier just to uh, turn everything by hand. It lets you lay the coils in a little easier. Each um, layer of coils I'm separating with the traditional paper. Uh, I also smeared some uh, silicone gunk, uh, um, uh, silicone sealant uh, on the, the coil windings. One of my understanding is one of the main failure modes of uh, transformers is uh, is the coil windings moving back and forth uh, a little bit and uh, wearing away the uh, the lacquer insulation. So I'm hoping this is going to keep everything uh, nice and steady. Uh, it was pretty pretty tough going uh, 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 winding these. Uh, it takes some hand strength to, to smooth the wire. Uh, I had this little block that I 3D printed that uh, was supposed to help smooth the wire uh, a little bit, but mainly ended up just putting on a leather glove and uh, uh, and running it through my fingers uh, um, as I put it onto the bobbin to straighten it, and uh, it took a lot of hand strength. The um, a secondary is wound with 10 gauge wire, uh, and that was even even harder to wind on, but uh, not quite so hard um, on the on the straightening hand because it was uh, 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 the the one part of this that I bought new. Uh, I just didn't have any heavy gauge wire for the secondary. The coil windings, so this is this is going to be a 240 volt transformer and I wanted to get about 60 volts uh, uh, out for the uh, welder side. So I went looking for uh, calculators on the web for uh, designing a transformer um, and um, there are lots of different ones and there are as many parameters as you can imagine to plug into some of these calculators uh, uh, to, to, to calculate exactly what 
uh, your uh, um, your windings should be. And I was not going to go through all that, uh, so I was looking for some rules of thumb. And uh, the simplest rule of thumb that I found was basically to take the number 7.5 and divide it by your cross-sectional area. And that came up with a multiplier that you would multiply by your input voltage and, uh, and your desired output voltage. And that would give you the um, number of turns for each of those windings. Uh, so really very simple. So I decided, okay, uh, I'm, I'm going to go with that, uh, but I'm going to I'm going to cheat either side of the number that I get. So on my primary coil, I have a tap at uh, so my primary coil. This um, uh, calculation told me that uh, this formula told me that I should have 166 turns. So I made a tap at 126 turns. I made a tap at 146, 166, and 186 turns. So hopefully one of those will. Uh, uh, will work for me. Um, and the whole thing won't blow up the moment I connect it to power. Um, which is exactly what I'm going to do now. Okay. Got a little hum. Nothing else. All right, let's see. What kind of current is it drawing? Hmm. Barely registers on the meter. Well, that's a good sign. All right. Let's check some voltages. Going in, we have 240 volts, and on the output, 60 volts, which is exactly what uh, I was calculating for. So, seems to be a success. The questions are how much current is it going to push? Um, uh, I imagine it will it should do pretty well with the gauge of the wire that I've used. Um, it will be interesting to see while welding uh, how quickly it heats up. Uh, that's going to determine what my uh, duty cycle is. Uh, so I think for my next test I am going to cobble up some uh, electrodes and try welding. Uh, I don't think I have any rods that are made for for AC, uh, so I'm going to do a little research and see if you can if you can weld with, you know, some of the standard rods uh, uh, successfully uh, uh, with AC, um, and give this a try and see how I do. I think I have a 400 amp rectifier bridge around here, so uh, uh, if uh, uh, I may also try it with. Uh, uh, DC welding too, um, before I start packaging it up in uh, the cabinet and adding uh, some of the other uh, things I intend to add, like um, uh, a contract, a contactor, and uh, I am hoping that I can use this other saturable reactor uh, on the input side and vary my current uh, with a foot pedal. Because uh, the ultimate goal here is, uh, I hope to use a high frequency start and a TIG torch um, to weld aluminum. Uh, it was the whole reason for this project uh, was to try to build something up that I could weld aluminum with. My engine-driven welder um, uh, alternator just does not produce, um, or I can't figure out how to get it to produce. Uh, AC current under load. Um, it may be that it would need, well, I don't know. Uh, uh, I tried connecting to uh, two of the wires, uh, two of the windings in a delta pattern and 
just couldn't get any current out of it. Um, and I guess that's all for now. This is Jack Von Slat. I'll see you next time.